the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4. Amen. And before we, before we actually um, read from verse 4, I want to share something with you that the Spirit of God ministered to me uh, concerning our body, concerning what's happening right now. Um, and it's, it's, it's more of a, this initial thing that I'm going to read to you, it's more of a statement that, that he just ministered to me, you know, while visiting with him and praying about this service. And I'll read it a few times in case you want to write it down, but this is, this is what he ministered to me by the Spirit of God. And when, when I use the word you, he was talking to me about us, so the you is plural, meaning all of us, okay? The you is plural, meaning all of us. And this is what he said. He says, I cannot bring you into the place of abundance that I have for you, the place of fullness that I've called you to, until I first bring you out of your understanding and into mine. I cannot bring you into the place of abundance that I have for you, says the Lord. That's how it came to me, right? Into the place of fullness that I called you to, right? Listen to those terms, abundance, fullness, right? I cannot. I cannot bring you into the place of abundance that I have for you, says the Lord, the place of fullness that I've called you to until I first bring you out of your understanding and into mine. Amen? Now, as, as this was just kind of stirring in me, when he says, until I first bring you out of your understanding, the sense I got was that that referred to man's ideas of who God is, man's ideas of what truth is, right? And, 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 and that's important. That's important. Even, even, though, even though we're born again, spirit-filled, loving God and walking with God, when we hear from God, when we get a leading and an unction from God, right, we... we we gauge it or we judge it uh, in the light of our own humanity. It, the, you understand what I'm saying? We, 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 we're not just humans, right? We're, we're divine creatures. We have the divine nature of God resident on the inside of us, right? But there are aspects of our humanity that we just tend to gauge and judge things uh, in the light of, Right? And so now the more intimate we become with the Lord, the more deeply rooted we become established in his word, the less of self, the less our humanity influences the conclusion we draw from God's word. Are you following what I'm saying? The less humanity plays a part in what in determining what we're actually hearing. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so, so the Father cannot bring us into the abundance, right, that, that he has for us, the fullness that he's caused us to, called us to, until, until we let him first bring, bring us out of our own understanding, right, the, the influences of our humanity, uh, right, and into, into his understanding, right? I can't bring you, I, I, I can't bring you into what I have for you, what I've called you to until, until I first bring you out of your understanding and into mine. Now, now, as I, as I meditated on that into my understanding, talking about the Lord, uh, what, what occurred to me was the mysteries of the kingdom revealed. The mysteries of God's kingdom revealed, right? So, so, 
So for, for in order for you and in order for me, right, to, to enter in to that which God has for us, that which God has called us to fully, right, then, then we've got to first, we've got to first be willing to forsake, turn away from, and let go, right, of, of what we have previously believed, of what we have previously thought and held in regard in exchange for what he is presently revealing to us by his spirit. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? And, and so, so the scripture tells us that it is given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Right? We're kingdom citizens, right? And so our citizenship entitles us to know, to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God, right? The mysteries of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The presence of the Lord is here. The mysteries of the kingdom of God. God, 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 God wants our walk with him, uh, uh, to become, to become more, uh, well, to become, to become less of a mystery. You understand? He, he, he wants, he wants our service to him, our life in the earth, uh, to, to become less mysterious, less taxing on the mind. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so he has a measure and a degree of knowledge and understanding he's trying to reveal and unfold to us that we cannot get if he doesn't show it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, 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 so now with, have, with that said, with that said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, God needs us to understand that, 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 uh, what he has for us is abundance. What he's called us to is fullness. Say this with me. Say the will of God for my life is that I have abundance. That I'm full. So full. I, I don't have room for more. God wants you so full that you don't even desire more. Are you understand what I'm saying? And, and when, when I say abundance and I say the word full, you, you know, different things may come to your mind when you hear those terms. You may, and, 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 and we probably, on some level, we think monetarily, we think materialistically, we, 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 think, we think financially, and we should, because it definitely includes all of those things. It's not limited to those things, but it definitely includes those things. Are you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God, God has abundance for us. He's called us to, to a place of fullness, right? That's his desire for, for each of us. And regardless, regardless of the economy, regardless of the conditions and circumstances present in the earth, regardless of, of a pandemic, no pandemic, it, the, 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 the evil present in this world has nothing to do with God's will for, for us. And, 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 and it's powerless, it's powerless to, to stop his will for us. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so even in the midst of, of, of adverse, uh, uh, effects, uh, and, and, and even of, even in the midst of the adverse effects that the pandemic has created, even in the midst of, of the evil that the curse has had, the effects of the curse on the earth and the conditions thereof, even in the midst of that and in the spite of that, God has abundance for you, and he's called you to that place that you be full. Hallelujah. And so we got to realize that, that, that the quality and the state of our lives and our affairs should be everything God intended, and, but, but it's never going to be that if we, because we tend to, because we tend to, we, we tend to tie so much of our welfare and well-being to external factors and conditions. And we've got to, we've got to, we've got to untie our hopes from the conditions of the earth. And we've got to tie our hopes to what is being revealed from heaven. 
Are you understand what I'm saying? What, what is it that I draw my hope from? If, if I have a hope or an expectation of a, of a particular thing in life, What's the basis of that hope? What, what am I drawing my hope from? What is, my, what is my expectation based on? Right? If my hope, if my expectation is to come up short, to go without, to be in lack, if my hope or expectation is, 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 to, is to fail, right? What is the basis of that hope? What am I drawing it from? If my hope, if my expectation is victory and success to win in life, what am I drawing that hope from? What is the basis? What is it tied to? The conditions of the earth or what's being revealed from heaven? Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Because see, heaven, heaven is, is, is where we have our citizenship. Heaven is, our, is where we have our origin. We are born from above. And so we have our citizenship in heaven. Our, our, our time in the earth it's, it's just, it's, 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 we're here on assignment. We're just here on assignment. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so whatever the conditions presently going on in our lives that we're facing while in the earth, we have to understand that, 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 that because of our assignment and because of, of, of our citizenship being heaven, because of who we are serving and who we're representatives of, if we encounter conditions and circumstances in the earth that are contrary to the covenant, to the governing system that, 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 that we ascribe to, then we are to, we are to inquire of headquarters for what to do about said circumstances. Not just accept those circumstances and allow them to dictate to us and keep us in a place of containment and restriction. Are y'all are understand what I'm saying? See, this is the whole point when we're talking about operating from a place of, of dominion and a place of authority. When you know you have a place of dominion, when you know you occupy a place of dominion and authority, then, then in sense you, you understand that, that you're in charge. Now we know the Father is in charge. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand it. But, 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 but we, are in a place of authority, he's, he's placed us in charge over the works of his hands. So he has charged us with the responsibility to exercise dominion and bring the conditions in the earth into subjection to, to his rule, to his will. As it pertains to our lives, our immediate lives, and our walk with God, but also as it pertains to the conditions within our domain, within the sphere of our influence, within our, the scope of our calling and our assignment. Are y'all, are y'all hearing? Are y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? So, so he has abundance for us. He's called us to a place of abundance and fullness. But before he can take us into that place, we got to let him bring us out of the place we currently stand in terms of our understanding. Now, so when, when, you, when you hear abundance and fullness, listen to it in, the, in, in these terms. Now, I'm going to read it to you from the King James first. Philippians 4, are you there? Look, at, look with me at verse number 18. Now, Paul is speaking. He says, but I have all and abound, I am full. See, he's, he's speaking of having received the offering that was sent to him to assist him in his assignment. And so, so he's, now, now it was, it was sent by, 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 uh, it says here, after that address, he's the messenger, he's the one to deliver it, but the churches got together and took up the offering and sent it at the direction of the Holy Ghost, right? So, so, so God, is, is, is the provider of this. He is the source of what he has received. Can, can we understand? Okay, so verse 18 again, he says, he says in verse 18, he says, I have all and I abound and I am full. 
Say this with me. Say, I have all and I abound. I am full. You see that? Okay, so now let me read that. Let me read that to you from the New American Standard Bible. Um, and, and this is what it says. It says, I have received everything in full and I, excuse me, I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied. Right? And in, in, the, in the note in, in the New American Standard where it says I am amply supplied, it means I'm full. I'm full, right? He's, he, he's, so he's repeating himself. He says, I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance, and I'm amply supplied, right? Abundance, full, right? You got it? And, and, and now he's on assignment, right? And, 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 and these churches have partnered with him and, and have been, and God used them as a resource to supply his needs. While on assignment. Now, 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 each of us have an assignment that's been given us by God, and each of us should be about our Father's business, whatever that is. But understand that, that God is well aware of needs. And as the, and as, as, as Jehovah Jireh, He saw the needs beforehand and provided for them ahead of time. And not just enough for us to just kind of squeak by, but to have a full and liberal supply. Abundance. Fullness. Not just of money, but abundance of joy. Fullness of peace. Where, where you're not moved in your mind in the face of evil tidings, bad news, unexpected bills, diagnoses, this come up, that come up. It doesn't move you. Because of the fullness of joy that you have. Which is your strength. Are you understand what I'm saying? Now let me read, let me read that. Let me read that to you from the, from the Passion Translation. Verse 18, he says, he says, I like this. He says, I now have all I need, more than enough. I'm abundantly satisfied. I now have more. No, excuse me, I now have all I need, more than enough. I am abundantly satisfied. That's the place. That's the place. That's the place God originally intended for the family of man. To be in a place of having everything we need, more than enough, Abundantly satisfied. Abundance, fullness. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? Even, 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 even if you look at John, what well, we know what it says in John chapter 10, he's, Jesus is referring to the thief. He says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Now, now let me read, let me read John 10 and 10 to you from the, from the Passion Translation. And this is what it says. He says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, to slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness, until you overflow. Now, listen to those words. Let's, listen, 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 listen. But I have come to give you everything in abundance. Are you understand what I'm saying? Think, think. So, 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 he's not just giving us everything we need, but he's giving us everything we need in abundance. Are you understand what I'm saying? He's not just giving you the things you desire. But he's giving you that in abundance. Are you understand what I'm saying? He says, I have come to give you everything you, excuse me, I've come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect, more than
than you expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. Overflowing abundance. See, we're not just talking about the, the being full up, but we're talking about overflowing. See, the cup runs over. The cup, the cup represents our life, right? He anoints my head with oil, right? So even ahead of time, he provided the necessary anointing to preserve and protect me in my walk with him and in my service to him, right? And he says, my cup, my life runs over, it, it, it runs over. It's so full of God's goodness, it can't be contained. See, the, 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 the peace of God that passes all understanding keeps your heart and your mind through Christ which strengthens you. It fortifies you inside, it, it, emotionally, in your heart, in your mind. It hardens you to difficulty so that you're not moved by evil tidings. But your heart is fixed and trusting in the Lord so rather than be moved by negative circumstances, you stand your ground and you say and do as the Father commands and the force of faith moves your circumstances. Hallelujah! Changes, rearranges conditions in your life, on your behalf. It will go to the heart of somebody, touch them who's in a position to do you a favor. Hallelujah. Are you understand what I'm saying? See, the Bible says he holds the heart of the kings in his hand. And he'll direct them just as he does the course of a river. So God can direct the hearts and the minds of those to deal favorably with you in situations and circumstances where, where otherwise they just wouldn't. They just wouldn't do that. And he's directing people in their hearts and their minds concerning this ministry, this house, concerning each of your households. And, 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 and furthermore, and furthermore, and, and, and under that direction, people are trying to do us a favor. Uh, but, uh, but, but see, one, uh, uh, see, the blessings are coming our way, but because we are so, uh, so, steeped in the human conventional wisdom of this world, we, we, don't, we don't see or perceive the blessings when they're coming our way. And a lot of times, not only do we not see them, because uh, our eyes are closed, we're dull of hearing, we're canceling them out with the words of fear and doubt and unbelief and murmuring and complaining. We're counseling them out. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, what, what, so what's preventing us from entering into this place of abundance? This place of fullness, this place of content, where there's not even room for more? Well, it's, it's kind of twofold. It's kind of twofold. And I just kind of touched on it. On one hand, it's just our normal, everyday, natural, human wisdom is, is, is what's preventing us from entering into that place. We are, we are more, we're more sense ruled than we are word ruled. We're, we're more ruled by what we perceive with our senses than what's being revealed to us from the word. So on the one hand, we're, we're, the thing that prevents us is just our natural, everyday human uh, wisdom, conventional wisdom, reasoning, right? But, 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 but when we look a little deeper, on the other hand, uh, how is it or why is it that this human conventional wisdom is, is, is able, uh, why, why, 
Why? Why is it? Why is it able to stop us? Why is it able to prevent? I mean, I mean, I mean, if you have if you have a person on 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 one hand uh, telling you uh, things that are logical and reasonable, but on the other hand, you have the Lord say, "Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth about the thing. I'm going to tell you the way it's supposed to be." Now, now, in order to, to receive what I tell you, you can't be fooling around over here with what's reasonable and logical. You can't be entertaining that. You can't be open to that. You can't be susceptible to that. You can't be considering that if you, if you, if you want to receive and embrace what I'm telling you. Okay, so we got the choices. So, so, I mean, is it all, the, it, it, is, is it that difficult? I mean, just choose. Just choose what God is saying. I mean, it's easy, right? So where is the, why is it so challenging and so hard? Where does the difficulty lie in it, right? I think, I think, I think, I think one of the reasons it's difficult and challenging uh, is because of, it's because we've placed more value on the wisdom of this world then we have the wisdom of God. Why? Why is it that uh, how is it that the wisdom of this world has uh, garnished such esteem, reverence from us that we value it. Uh, I think one of the reasons is is because is because we're really not interested in what, in, in doing it God's way. We're really not. Now, now, don't misunderstand me. We are interested in what God has. We're interested in what God's way will produce. We're interested in the result of embracing what he's saying and letting go of the wisdom of this world. But we're not really interested in actually letting go and taking hold where we have no control, nothing we can look at to make sense, to draw hope from, where we're completely dependent on the Lord. We have no real interest in that because that, to the, hum to the natural mind, that's risky. That's fearful. That's scary. And we're constantly bombarded by the enemy concerning our present evil conditions and circumstances. And he's telling us how foolish we are, how stupid we are. And he's rem he's reminding us of the last time we tried to walk by faith, the last time we gave, the last time we did this. What happened? Are, are you following what I'm saying? That's why so many. That's why that's one of the reasons why so many single men, so many single women. You, you, you all messed up over, 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 over in, in, in the area of relationships. Cause, cause the hurt from, from, from one wrong relationship still lingers. And in order to ensure you don't suffer that same hurt, you make sure you maintain control. And you guard against. And you shoot down. No. No, you, you got to let God heal you, restore you, and then trust God. Ask the, and if you are, and if you're talking to God, God will show you where you messed up with the last dude, the last girl. He'll, you, he'll bring to your remembrance how he told you, he told you from the jump he won't no good. He could have used me to tell you he won't no good. He could have used your mama and them, somebody. He, he spoke directly to you, but when you won't hear it, he sent somebody else.
Uh, oh, praise God. I, I just heard it pass. I thought you called me. Okay. okay. So, 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 so it's, so listen, it's, it's, it's the lack of value that we have on God's way of doing things. We, we don't value it. We don't value, we don't place high enough value on hearing God. You know how I know? Because we can just look at, we can just look at the time and effort we spend on positioning ourselves to hear. So if, if, if I got to be at work at seven o'clock and I jump out the bed at six thirty and I'm rushing out the door by, 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 by five minutes to seven, whip, and ain't spent no waking moments inquiring and listening, being still with God. Why? Because I don't value it. Because if I valued it, I'd do it. That's it. That's it. Who you spend your time with, on your time on? Who you spend your money with? Oh, uh, you look at your time and you look at your money and I'll show you what you value. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so, so God, 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 is calling us to move deeper, deeper into the spirit. He is. He, he's, he's calling us to move deeper into the spirit. He's calling us to move from human reasoning to revelation. You, you understand what I'm saying? He's 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 calling us to move from the from the shallow part of the of the of the lake out into the deep right he's 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 calling us to move from the shallowness of our own human wisdom right into the immeasurable depth of the mysteries of the kingdom Hallelujah. See, they're only a mystery to the carnal mind. But they're not a mystery to the spirit because the, 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 the very spirit of truth is in us, guiding us, teaching us. And it's by him, the anointed one, that holy unction, we know all things. Are you understand what I'm saying? But it's going to require Time is going, it's going to require making a quality. First of all, it's going to, it's going to require realizing what's truly advantageous, what's truly beneficial. It's going to require making a quality decision, right? To, to set aside time, to have an appointed time, right? That's why when, if you go to the doctor, you get an appointment, right? You have an appointed time. Right? And, and a lot of folks, we even try to arrive early, earlier than the appointed time. Because we place a value on hearing what that do, what, what the doctor's gonna say. Well, where is the appointment with God? Where, where? Oh, I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. But I don't have time for him until my back up against the wall. I understand what I'm not fussing as I'm trying to sober us up in our thinking to help us to realize if we're not happy with where, where we are, you can move. You can move out of it into the place God has for you. And, 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 and now, if, now, if you're unwilling to move, now I can't fix that. That's between you and the Lord and the, and the devil, whoever you're listening to. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? 
Okay, so 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 look at look at look at Luke chapter five. We're talking about launching out into the deep. Did I give you the title? Launching out into the deep is the title. Launching out into the deep. In Luke five, I just want to first of all just go to let's go to verse four because this is this, Jesus had you know we understand the situation. Jesus had asked to borrow, wanted to use. Peter's boat to preach, to teach the kingdom, right? And having done so, now that he's finished, right? In verse 4, he says to Simon, to Peter, he says, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so this word, mm, help me, Lord. Launch out into the deep. Let down your nets for a drought. So now understand, Jesus is instructing Peter on what to do in order that Peter can obtain the desired outcome. Right? We understand that, right? Y'all good? Y'all with me? And, and we later see that Peter, Peter tells us that we, we've we toiled. We've toiled. We've toiled exhaustingly all night long, but we didn't catch anything. Why was they toiling all night long? Why were they, why were they working during the night? Because human conventional wisdom dictated that this is what you do to catch fish in that particular lake because it's so clear in the daytime they can see the net coming. The fish can see the net and they can swim away from it. So the wisdom of man says, oh, okay, I I'll smart you fish. I'll drop the net at night. So they did what human conventional wisdom had conditioned them and taught them to do and, and, and didn't get the results they wanted. See, human conditional wisdom may, it may, it may produce a measure of, 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 of the things you want, but it, but it's, but, but it won't do it every time because we have an adversary, an enemy to our faith working against us. And there are going to be times and situations where human conventional wisdom, once it's gone its point, it's not enough to sustain us and to keep us in the face of the evil we're dealing with. And so in this particular case, they weren't able to catch anything doing it the human conventional, conventional wisdom way, right? So now Jesus, now in broad daylight, he's instructing them in a course of action that's completely unreasonable, completely outside of the scope of human reasoning in order that they can uh, re re receive the desired outcome. Are you understand what I'm saying? So that's when we get the news. Peter says, look, I, we tried this all night long. But nevertheless, on the basis of your word, I'm going to drop the net. Now, we know what happened. They caught so many fish. The net broke. They called to their partners to help them come to get the fish. And they caught so many fish that both, both vessels began to sink. And the, so, so the outcome they received was, was, was abundance, fullness, beyond what they had room for, overflow. Excess. I imagine fish sliding off that thing back into the lake because it just won't no more room. So God brought them into a place of abundance and fullness when they were willing to let go and forsake human conventional wisdom for revelation, for instruction from the wisdom of God. Are you understand what I'm saying? Okay, but now, now, so, okay, so, so, 
did, did you cover them statements? Did I get close enough to where you let raise them statements up? Okay, so 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 I had a couple of statements. The desired outcome or end result cannot be obtained by human wisdom, but only by God's power. Uh, and this other statement was, what is the outcome that God desires for for us? Is that we have abundance and that we're full, right? So now let's look, let's look at this verse four. Launch out into the deep. Let's look at this word launch. So this word launch means to propel. It means to go forward, right? It means to take off, right? But I found it interesting that one of the words, one, I think they call it the, the, the intransitive use of it as a verb means to return. It means to return. Now put a pen there. Launch means to return. Go to the word deep. Launch out into the deep. You look that up in your, in your Strong's and Corners, the Greek translation. It, it means mysteries. Launch out into the mysteries. The mysteries. Right? The mysteries. The mysteries of God. All right. Hold, hold your place there. Hold your place there. And go to Matthew 13. So launch means to return out into the deep. The word deep has to do with mysteries. Right. Look at Matthew 13. And I want to read something to you. Uh, in a couple of different translations. Matthew 13. Are you there? So look, look with me in the King James, verse 11. Jesus answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It is given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Look at your neighbor and say, you supposed to know. Amen. Now, the, then, the, then the Amplified Classic says, it is given unto you to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Right? Now, I want to read this from the amplified, the amplified, the amplified, the contemporary version. Not the classic, but the contemporary version. It says this. To you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But if you have it an app, uh, if you have that in an app, you, there's a little section there, a note, a footnote you click on, and this is what it says about mysteries. Things which humans cannot know or discover on their own unless God reveals it to them. Things which humans cannot know or discover on their own unless God reveals it to them. So it is given unto you to know the mysteries of God's kingdom. It is given unto us. In other words, as citizens of the kingdom, we're supposed to operate in a knowledge and understanding that has been revealed to us by God. And we're not limited to, to what we know in the natural. We're not contained or restricted to the knowledge we'd have just from human conventional wisdom. Because it's given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. The mystery, that which cannot be known or discovered on our own, but it has to be revealed to us by God. Right? So, so, so we, we're called to live by revelation knowledge. Not information but revelation. We take in information through our physical senses to be able to interact with the, the natural realm, right? And so, so I can, I can be crossing the street and with my eyes see a car coming. Well, I don't walk by faith then. I walk by sight. My sight tells me that's a car coming. Stay out the road. Are you understand what I'm saying? And if you want to take the time to pray, I'm sure God will tell you stay out the road. 
Right? But now, when my senses perceive information that's contrary to revelation, then I got to be willing to unhook from the information and take hold to the revelation. For instance, if information tells me, uh, you ain't got enough, you're going to be short, you better hold on, don't you give. Well, I come over here to revelation, right? Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run over, shall men give unto your bosom. You, you, listen, you, you had a fine meal, or maybe your meal won't so fine, so you, now, now you want to hold back the tip. Right? Well, see, you are, you are determining the measure in which you're going to confer a blessing on somebody. Well, I'm going to tip them just a little bit. Well, that's the same measure that's going to be used when it comes back to you. The measure we use to confer blessing and prosperity upon others is the measure that God used when he influences men to give back to you. So if you use, if you use a little, if you use a little teaspoon measure to bless somebody, that's what's coming back to you, a teaspoon measure. But if you go down here and, 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 and get you a dump truck load measure, then you got a dump load truck measure coming back. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so don't, don't let well, their service was bad. Don't let their service to you determine your tip. Let what you expect to get back from God determine your tip. Be the blessing you want to receive. I understand what I'm saying. So, so, so it is get, it is given to us to know the mysteries, right? It, we have a right to live by knowledge that we can't perceive with our senses. We're supposed to live by knowledge that the senses can't perceive, that the natural mind can't come up with. We're supposed to live by a measure of knowledge that the human natural mind can't conceive, the eye hadn't seen it, the ear hadn't heard it, it hadn't entered into the heart of man. But it's revealed. There are things, there's knowledge, there's understanding revealed to us by the Spirit of God that we're supposed to live by. The Spirit of God reveals to us the things that he has prepared and keeps ready for us. He reveals to us the place he's prepared for us, that place of abundance, that place of fullness. The Bible in Psalms says it, calls it that wealthy place. We need a revelation of our wealthy place, that you have a wealthy place that God has prepared for you, and he will reveal to you what to do and how to proceed moving forward to enter into that place of abundance, that place of being full and running over, in spite of what's going on around you. Are you understand what I'm saying? Launch into the deep. Launch out to the deep, deep referring to mysteries, right? So we got a, be a little better understanding of that, right? We're, we're not to live and conduct our lives based on what we can perceive with our senses only. We have a right to hear from God things that the mind just can't come up with and live accordingly. The mysteries of the kingdom, it is given to us to know why. So, but, 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 but look, let's keep going. Matthew 13, right? To you it has been given, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whosoever has spiritual wisdom, because he is receptive to God's word, to him more will be given. Okay, whoever has, and the Amplified Contemporary says, spiritual wisdom, why does he have spiritual wisdom? Because he is receptive to God's word, right? To him more will be given. And he will be richly and abundantly supplied, but whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word, even what he has will be taken away from him. So the value we place on human conventional wisdom causes us to devalue the revealed truth of God's word. So we have no interest in what God is saying because we place so much value on good old fashioned common sense and human wisdom. We, we, we place value on the doctor, on the judge, on the lawyer. We, we place, we, uh, we, 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 we place 
so much value on, 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 on the CDC. Look, I ain't knocking doctors, I ain't knocking CDC, I ain't knocking the profession, the medical staff, none of that. I'm not knocking none of that. I'm just saying, I'm going to do my utmost to live by what I hear God say and what I see God do. So, so I, I, I can care. I, I don't, I, I can care. I don't care. I don't care what, 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 what the doctor got to say about it. Who is he? Look, the doctor's realm of authority can allow him to examine a person, collect the data, run the checklist, draw a conclusion, Make a diagnosis, okay, you have this condition, X, Y, Z. He can do that. But what he does not have the authority to do is then tell me because of this, you won't be able to do this, 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 or that. You can't do this. You won't have to expect this. He don't have the authority to tell me how long I'm going to live. That's outside of his purview. That's outside of the scope of his authority. He can diagnose what he can observe naturally and present facts, right? That's one report, reasonable, human, conventional. Will. See, 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 his eye, his microscope, his equipment can't perceive the healing that belongs to me. But it's revealed to me that it's mine. But I got to see it. And I can't see it with the natural eye because it's not in a realm where the natural eye can pick it up. But if I go to God's word and visit with him long enough, then he'll unfold it, he'll reveal it, and I'll see by the spirit, oh no, I'm healed. Oh, that natural eye can say, oh no, I'm looking short this way. No, 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 what? You Jehovah Jireh, my provider, what you do? What for the tither? Oh yeah, no, I got it. I'm, I'm good. I have abundance. Are y'all see what I'm saying? All right. So, 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 human wisdom, because we place so much value in it, prevents us from moving into the place of abundance and fullness that God has called us to. See, so for so many to, of us, we'd rather be safe. We would ha rather have the false sense of security that the natural data provides than run the risk of following and obeying God and it don't work out like, like he said. And I come up short and go without. I promise you, if you are sincere in your motives towards God, and following him and make an error, he got you covered. See, he, he knew you was going to make the error before you made it and already had provision in place. There's no mistake we can make that's too big for his grace to cover. Now, if we're not sincere in our motive towards God and we're just doing our own thing, okay, yeah, you're going to make a whole bunch of mistakes. That was the first mistake right there. Not being sincere towards God in our motives, but just by, about our own. That was the first mistake right there. That's a costly one right there. You understand what I'm saying? But, but, but the moment we realize that and repent, boom, you're right there. Which brings me back to launch. Launch. One of the meanings of the word launch is return. So it is given unto us to know and operate according to the mysteries of the kingdom, according to what God reveals, right? So I submit to you that to launch out into the deep is to return to God as your source. It is to return to God's word as the standard. It is to return back to the place you belong. It, 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 it is to do an about face that Eve did. Eve departed from God's word as the standard 
when she began to entertain the serpent and began to see, oh yeah, that looks good. I, that's desirable to make me wise. Right? So she placed value in human reason. So what we have got to do to, to, to launch, to, to, to return, we've got to return back to God's word as the standard. And that's, that's what, that's why the church has, has gotten in so much trouble because we have, we've gotten away from God's word as the standard. The standard has dropped. I, I, I heard, I was listening to Bill Winston while I was getting dressed this morning and I caught him, caught him, he was live and he said this. He said, the, the church has gotten too caught up into personalities. We, we can, well, who's speaking? Who, who preaching? Pastor gonna be there? No, we too caught up in the personalities and we don't care enough about power. And so we, since, since, since we don't care nothing about power and we ain't seeing no signs and wonders, we're not seeing any evidence, right? Then, then what happens? We have now replaced, we've replaced the word for human philosophy. We've replaced the word with the rules and traditions of men. We've replaced the words, the, the word of God with, with, with political correctness. Are you understand what I'm saying? And so as a result, we, the, 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 we, there is no standard. God's word is not the standard. So if God's word is not the standard, there's nothing for God to confirm. So ain't no power. Ain't no signs. Ain't no wonders. And we come up with all these religious cliches to justify why our lives so jacked up. Well, you know, I'm just going through. The Lord working on me. He dealing with me. This is for the glory of God. There's some great mystery coming out of all of this. I want it. I ain't going to say what I want to say. I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. I'm going to say what I was going to say, but I didn't say it. I didn't say it, but what I was going to say, that's stupid. That's just stupid. I didn't say that. That's what I wanted to say. Are you following what I'm saying? Stupid. We, 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 we as the church, we go to the world for advice. They don't know the first thing about life. They don't know the first thing about God, but we let them tell us how to live. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. At, at, at one time, we, we walked after the course of this world. That's the King James. The message translation says that we, we, we breathed, we, what did we breathe in foolishness and exhaled disobedience. We let the world, who don't know the first thing about living, tell us how to live. Because we place value in human reasoning, conventional wisdom. On, on theories and doctrines and philosophies, on the, on the secret of the universe and all of this foolishness. And now they're trying to tell you, if you disagree with what they say, you hate them. I, I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate nobody that's, that's living a homosexual lifestyle. I just disagree with, 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 with how you live. I don't hate you. I love you. Enough to tell you, you don't have to live that way. And I'm just telling you what the Bible said. I, I don't, I don't hate you if, if 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 you had an abortion. I'm not saying that to condemn anybody that may have. I'm just saying we can disagree without being mad at each other. Are you understand what I'm saying? Okay, I got to find somewhere to stop. Okay, so look. We, we, we've, got, we've grown so comfortable. I, I, the familiarity breeds a degree of comfort that we're unwilling to break out of at the risk of uncomfort, un, of being discomforted. You understand what I'm saying? We, we gotta be, you know, I, I, I was talking to this guy who, who, who grew a beard. Like, like, brother, you got a nice beard, right? 
I have never been able to get past that itchy stage. You know, I, 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 I think I went two or three weeks one time and it did itch, right? But they say if you get past the itchy stage, you got it, right? Well, you got to be willing to get past the itchy stage in walking with God. It's going to be a little itchy, a little scratchy, a little uncomfortable at first because you're now letting go of everything you've trusted in to depend on God. That you don't have no physical evidence that exists. And it get a little, it get a little, yeah. But if you can endure and let patience come underneath your faith and have its perfect work, boom, you'll bust out on the other side. And you can walk. You'll have that assurance, that conviction. And it'll grow because we're still cultivating our, our relationship with God. It'll continue to grow and become more and more what it ought to be. But we got to start. We got to start the walk with the step. We got to start the process with the decision. Are you understand what I'm saying? So it begins with us placing, have, having an interest and a desire to serve God and fulfill our calling, and then placing the value where it needs to be placed on him, on his word. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, so, the, so let me just end with this. Go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, and then I'm going to look at one verse there, and I'm going to look at a few, it, it, it look at ver, a verse in, in chapter 40 also, and then I'm going to be done. Isaiah 41, are you there? So look at it. This is the Amplified Classic Translation. Verse number 10 says, fear not. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. There's nothing to fear. Don't, don't look at, don't look at how hard the assignment is, how big the assignment is. Don't look at all the circumstances and opposition and get dismayed and discouraged by what you see. God says, I'm with you. I got you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come through for you. Amen. He's holding you up with his victorious right hand of righteousness and just. In other words, with his right hand, he's going to see that things are right and just for you. Hallelujah. You, you talk. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you talk about somebody protecting you as his bride. Jesus got a serious right hand. When he's smacking you, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wrap. <laughs> he really going to protect his bride. <laughs> All right, go back to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. <laughs> now, this is also the Amplified Classic. And, and I, you know, I say that lightly and we all laugh, you know, but, 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 but that really, when you look at it, man, that ain't funny because, because that dude hurt me. And he need prayer. He need intercession. All right, look at verse, look, Isaiah 40, look at verse 29. Look at verse 28. Amplified Classic. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength, causing it to multiply and making it to abound. Even youth shall faint and be weary. And selected young men shall feebly stumble and, and, and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, shall change and renew their strength and power. They shall lift their wings and mount up close to God as eagles. Mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Launch out into the deep. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet.